Hey folks, so it looks like you guys have been having some trouble with uh, plotting pedoprobe data, and so I'm just gonna go over a couple common pitfalls, okay? So um, I had a student email me some, uh, some base pedoprobe data here, and the, uh, if you look at the, if you just look, the first column is time, and the second column is a digital output, and so this is a number between zero and 65536. Now you need to make sure that your data file is either digital output or voltage. And the easiest thing to do is to just plot the raw digital output. So if I run this, here's my raw digital output. So this is obviously with the fan off, this is with the fan on, and this is with the fan off again. Now this is pretty terrible data if you look at it. I mean, there, if you got good data, there will be a flat line, some spikes, there will still be some noise, but then it'll come back down. I'm gonna try and filter this and see if I can get this to work. Um, but again, I'm just going to kind of go over if, if you were just, you know, turning the crank and trying to plot this, um, this is what you would do to get that to work. Okay. So if you plot the raw data and you get just these big numbers from zero to six, five, five, three, six, that means you are in the range of uh, digital output. And so you need to convert that to voltage, right? So I'm going to convert to voltage and I have some example code down here that I'm going to pull. Um, but basically you're going to say voltage is your digital output times 3.3 over 65536. And then I'm going to make a new figure and I'm going to plot time and voltage here. Okay. And run that. And so now I've got two figures. So now here's my voltage here. So what you want to do then, my recommendation is to just kind of, you, you can do this analytically if you want, but this is, this project is due tomorrow. So I would just, you know, cut your losses here. So I would just zoom in again. If you just hit, if you hit the home menu, you'll go back to here. I would just zoom in on this like beginning section when the fan is off. And this looks like 2.601. That looks like the average there. So I'm just gonna, you know, bias the voltage and just say that my V bias is 2.601, right? So then my Delta V then is just voltage minus my bias. Okay, and hang on, let me, let me move this down here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and PLT plot time and delta V. Okay, and then I'm gonna throw down a new figure. Okay, and so here's figure three. So here's my bias voltage. So it's like zero here and then it bounces around and then it's, it's like even less than that. And again, that's the, these pedo probes are 25 bucks. They're not very fancy. This would not go on a full size aircraft, but you know, it, it is what it is. This is what money can buy right now. So once you have the bias voltage, now you need to convert to pressure. And so I think the pressure equation, yeah, you just divide it by, um, let's see, convert to, and actually this is an atmospheres by the way. So PO is, I'm gonna call this, this is a different variable, delta V. And I'm not actually going to um, plot this just because it, it's gonna look exactly the same as the other one. Um, so I can delete all this. What I really wanna look at is a, is a couple things. So first, uh, what is the equation to get to um, wind speed, right? Well, there are two, okay? The first is you need to take I'm gonna call this V1, it's two times delta P. And so actually this is really delta P atmosphere. It's delta P in Pascals divided by the density. Okay, that's the first equation. All right, so let's do that one first. So if this is delta P in atmospheres, that means that delta P in kilopascals is actually just delta V, right? Because if you look at the conversion 101325, this is kilopascals in an atmosphere. So this is already, your delta V is already in kilopascals. So if you want delta P in pascals, it's just delta P in kilopascals times 1000, right? And so if you want to convert to atmospheres, you take delta P kilopascals and you divide by 101325, okay? So now I need one more thing. I just need the density of air. Well, the density of air is 1.225. How do I know that? I'm an aerospace engineer and I memorized it when I was in college. This is in kilograms per meter cubed. 
And so V1 is two times DP, sorry, delta P in Pascals over the density, okay? And I'm going to plt.figure, plt.plot, time comma V1. And because this is my final plot, I'm going to X label this, time, I'm gonna Y label this, uh, wind speed, meters per second. I'm actually gonna label this too, label this as uh, incompressible, I think, is the incompressibility equation. And then I'm gonna throw a grid down and a legend down, okay? And then show that and hit F5 and hopefully that works. Oh, didn't like it. Said that kilo, oh, of course, kilopascals doesn't exist. So my last, there we go. So there's, there's my wind speed. This is horribly noisy. Uh, but I mean, this is, this is kind of, you know, you, you play with the cards you're dealt. Okay. Um, let's try the uh, incompress incompressibility equation. So the incompressibility equation looks like this. It looks like V2 is NP dot square root. This is actually, I don't like this in here. It's actually supposed to be A0, where A0 is the speed of sound at sea level. So that's 331, speed of sound at sea level. Okay, so then this is gonna be delta P atmosphere, okay? Now the problem with this equation is that, okay, this also needs to be 2.0 over 7.0. The problem with this equation is that if this value is less than one and you take a square root, it's gonna freak out. So you're gonna see this data is not gonna look good at all. So this is compressible, okay? And so this, um, this equation here comes from the compressibility equation you need to have 2.0 over 7.0 so that you, uh, it knows it's an integer. So if I plot this, there it gives me the runtime warning where there's an invalid value in the square root. And if you look at this, I mean, basically everything, everything went negative. So you can't even see the data. So the easiest thing to do to make sure that the data actually comes out right is to just compute this value and call it k, okay? And then say k of k less than zero, just set it equal to zero, and then do square root of k. And so now what we should see, there you go. So it's zero everywhere except for a couple places, okay? And so that's, again, this is shitty data. It's just kind of, uh, it's just kind of what we do. And you notice it just truncated this because this was all negative and it just threw it out. Um, if we plot the data, Let's see, if we plot the data, just the compressible equation, I, I think the magnitude will make a lot more sense. Yeah, so that, I mean, that makes a lot more sense. It's like four meters per second with the fan on. Um, but you really need to filter this. And so um, you don't need to do this for your project, but I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in a filter here just so you can kind of see how this works. So let's add a complement mentory filter and so we're going to say v2 filtered is zero times v2 v2 actually i'm just going to say it's equal to v2 and then say i in range zero to len v2 so this is going to loop through the uh the vector and i'm going to start at one and i'm going to say v2 filtered of no, actually i'm going to start at zero I'm gonna to go to minus one. And I'm gonna say V2 filtered of I plus one is equal to V2 filtered of I times S plus one minus S times V2, I spelled filtered wrong, times V2 of I. I think that will work. Um, plt.plot time V2 filtered, label equals filtered, uh, wind speed. Um, let's see here. I need an S. So I'm going to do 0.5 for now, which will basically filter halfway and let's see how that works. 
Oof, that's terrible. Uh, let's do zero and then V2 filtered of ah uh, of zero is V2 of zero. And let's try that. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Um, what happened was, is if you don't do a zero, it makes a copy of it. And if you change V2, it changes V2 filtered. So you kind of need to, you need to throw that in there so that it makes, it actually makes a copy of it rather than just like linking them together. So now if we change this filter coefficient, yeah, beautiful. So that, that looks a lot better. Uh, we should make the first one zero cause that's, let's just, let's just cut this line out. There we go, that's not bad. Again, this filter, I mean, this you can see this first order roll off or whatever. Um, but anyway, at least for the project, all I'm looking for is uh, is these is these two these two plots here. Uh, nope, compressible and this one. Okay, so this is all I'm looking for. These spikes are pretty awful with the uh, incompressible or yeah, the incompressible version. You know, it is what it is. Okay, um, I guess I'm going to push this to the microcontrollers Git. Um, I guess let me go ahead and do that right now. Uh, let's see. So let's see, CD desktop, uh, CP plot, pedo probe to home, Carlos, documents, GitLab, microcontrollers, Python? No. Oh yeah, this is, I'm actually just plotting by this. So I'm gonna put this in the Python Git. And then, is there an instrumentation folder? Sweet. So now I'm going to home, Carlos, documents, GitLab, Python, and then git status, and then git add, instrumentation, plot, and then git commit, dash am, added a plotting script for instrumentation, and then git, and then gpush. Okay, so there you go, it's on the cloud for all to see. All right, if you have any questions, uh, post in the comments and I will get back to you. Hope you enjoyed this lecture.